There is nothing more stunning than watching a raptor, a bird of prey. They're the top of the food chain and they deserve to be there. Oh, <laughs> I love that. That okay, is just feel that wind, right? stunning. Look at those, look at the wingspan. Look at those wings. Well, that was a pretty dramatic landing, wasn't it? So I want you to meet Odin. He's a wedge tail eagle. And Alex has got him on a gloved hand. And on my right is Ravi. Now, these guys run a sanctuary. Tell me what you actually do here, fellas. It's basically a home or an ark, if you like, for a lot of Australia's endangered bird species. We've got uh, breeding programs for threatened bird species. We have got a rehab side where birds of prey, like Odin, yeah. that can't be released back out in the wild, call that place home. Uh, and here at the, at the nature reserve, we've got 100 acres where people uh, from all over the country can come out here and um, fly our birds of prey at the reserve. So you're telling me that people can actually come here yep. and fly a bird? Totally. Just like Odin here. Just like Odin. If I wanna come down, I'm gonna ride this high all night. This place we've got to have a good look at. You know, the idea of working with animals and connecting with them and building relationships, you know, created a sanctuary that we're all quite proud of. We're dealing these days, all over the world, not just in Australia, with so many species that we have so few left to breed from. We've got uh, some nocturnal species that we fly, some owl species as well. And yeah, you can fly them during the day. We can fly them during the day. They're very opportunistic. Let's go fly some Let's owls. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Now fly some owls. What do you got there, mate? Little baby sooty owl. A sooty owl. Okay. Now, she's very noisy. Very noisy because she's a baby. Yeah. So this is just her letting me know, because apparently I'm mum. Um, I want food. This is an orphan bird, hand raised, isn't it? Yeah. Now the parents of this particular owl have had a few few rounds at trying to be parents, but they're not successful parents. So we had to intervene and hand raise uh, this little baby sooty owl. We, we call Alex the mother of owls out here because when he raises all of our orphans, they all see him as mum, and whenever Alex turns up, he just has to talk because they can hear so well, they start squawking. Run right to the very front of the camera, haven't you? Hey, Right, OK. And you're talking away, are you? Yes, you are. When you're raising them, this is all night. It goes on all night. All night. They don't... They make it in their sleep. Well, I've got uh, this little female barn owl now, Harry. She is beautiful. She's yet to be named, so we're working on that. Maybe we can come up with one today. But uh, she's a little bit older than the sort of owl you saw. And her colours and patterns are designed for open grassland, so that sort of rural environment. And uh, she's keen for a bit of a fly. I mean, look at... She's on. I've actually got a glove for you, Harry. So we'll get her to fly back in. Hey. Now, how different did she land, right? How different was she? Because she came down really slowly and quietly and landed, you know? Yeah. Was it like bang, like an eagle or, a, you know, something hits you? Different, can, can different you bird altogether. Uh, totally, and you can see how those wings come into play, that short tail, that little bit of a hover, and then that elegant pounce. Yeah. Right on there. Hey, nice stuff. There's no risk they're stunning, right? The colour is amazing. And, you know, everybody expects macaws to be giants like this, but, of course, there's lots of different species and some are quite small. Yeah, totally. Look, this is red. He's a scarlet macaw. Yeah. Look at those incredible colours. Like Fantastic, aren't Red, they? yellow and blue. And you'll find these guys in South America. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's such a spectacular colour that you'll see in, uh, on these particular birds. What's surprising is when they're in dense rainforests, they actually blend in yeah. like, surprisingly yeah. well. Yeah. Like out here, they stand out a little bit, but uh, red's a part of our uh, educational program to teach people about birds across the globe. So he's free flight. We've got a few other birds in the flock. Do you want to meet some of the other birds? Yeah, absolutely. How many all together? Oh, man, I'll keep it a surprise, OK? But with this rain, I reckon we'll see a couple of black cockatoos. They're beautiful. Beautiful. Hey, you run a bit more. OK, there you go. All right. There you go. OK, what about you? All right. So you can pick the females with the yellow spotting around the head and the bars on the tail, whereas the males like this one, 
No hey, spotting no. in a solid red tail underneath. Black cockatoo politics is a whole new world, Harry. I, I, they are just the greatest Australian parrot going, huh? Right? Their attitude is amazing. These females are huge. Yeah, they're massive. Right? Huge. You have to pick my number one bird. Give me a red tail black any day of the week. They are sensational. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. For anybody watching that, they would have to think it's spectacular. So I'm going to ask you the secret, OK? How did you get the birds down here in the first place? But more importantly, why didn't they fly away? And why did they go back home? They're extremely intelligent. Teaching them to fly is already natural. It's just building that relationship and we use their favourite reward. So it's lots of little steps. And um, over the years, we've kind of perfected it. And, you know, they respond really well. But he's, uh, he's around 28 years of age now, and I think he's doing a great job. Yeah, for, I think he's fantastic. He's the oldest um, hawking bird that we fly with guests um, here. He's the oldest. It is an amazing experience to have that bird come and hit your hand, and they, yeah, they do hit it, you know, fairly hard, right? But you're well protected with a good, thick leather glove. It's a fantastic... <laughs> There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait A first time, a first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart erased So catch me if I fall Those wings, you know, like a pelican's got big wings, mate, you know, but that puts a pelican in the shade. He'll eat anything that's already dead. Now, these guys are pretty much cleanup crew and they have the ability to break down any sort of virus and bacteria that, that uh, a dead animal might have passed away from. And they'll clean up, um, you know, any remnant bodies. And it's a great way of keeping an, an area healthy and clean. It stops the spread of viruses and diseases because yeah. these guys will come along and clean it up. We're going to have the female come out in a minute, but she doesn't like strangers like me very much at all. Well, the trouble is she might like me, <laughs> bits of me, and that's the problem. So I'm going to step outside. No stop to us now, baby. You know, I come to a place very often, I never quite know what to expect. But I was blown away by what I saw. Just absolutely amazing. And then to look at your conservation project, breeding birds like people never see. Yeah. You know, amazing. And your rapport, both of you, with birds, your knowledge, your experience is fantastic. It's been amazing, but I'll tell you one more thing. I'll be back. <laughs>